Hi, I'm Pit Master Rex, and I'm going to show you how to fat based food. This is my first fat basting tool. It's an old French rustic and literally rustic piece of equipment that a long, long time ago I bought on eBay. I was looking for a device like this to use as an ancient technique that the French people used to use. They had these giant fireplaces in their castles and in front they would have a rotisserie, a wine of rotisserie, not the ones that we have nowadays, but like a, literally like a clock that they had to wind up. And then because the meat might dry out a little bit or they weren't, they weren't getting the crust that they were looking for, they used something like this to melt fat and then baste their food with it. I'm not kidding you, this is like an original ancient thing that somebody replicated. But now there is this, the new version of our fat basting tool. And that's so cool. And actually this company, Forged, they saw my video with that old French thing and how they recreated it. And they got me the stainless steel shaft with a good wooden grip and a big fat melting pot. And the cool thing is you don't have to go on eBay and look for hours and hours. I think I've looked for that old thing for about a week until I found one because it was all in French, I couldn't find it. And the thing is called a flambadou, which is like, who comes up with those names? But this is kind of cool, right? Let's fire up our little wood-fired oven and heat this thing up. This is my terrace heater. I put some birch in it. I fired it up and now it's screaming hot. I'm gonna use it to heat up my flambadou, my forged flambadou. Now, of course, you can do this in your barbecue. Just light up some charcoal, give it some good heat so that flambadou gets really red and red hot. And I mean red hot, not half hot, hot hot. Let me show you how the forged flambadou actually works. This is a French baguette and it's perfect to show you how fat basting actually works. For fat, I have herb butter, bacon, and what you fat. Her butter melts easy and gives off a lot of flavor. A typical classic French ingredient. To take it to the next level, bacon. It's salty and it's flavorful and it makes everything taste better. And now the king of fat, the Japanese Wagyu beef. Renders down super easy, gives a nice golden brown look on our baguette and never fails us. Herb compound butter. This never gets old. It's already perfect as it is. Because the butter is melted, it kind of seeps into the baguette, which makes it so tasty. Bacon. No, no. This could work on a burger, but not on bread. It's okay, it's nice, but the fat of the bacon tastes bitter. It's almost like it's burned. And finally, the king, Wagyu. Mm. Holy, it's like a crouton. I wasn't expecting Wagyu to be better than bacon. Completely different to the bacon. The fat is much lighter and it's almost like the butter. But still, there's a hint of bitterness. I showed you what the flambadou is. I showed you what kinds of fat you can use. And now I'm gonna show you how you can put this to good use. I got three tasty dishes that I'm gonna improve with the art of fat basting. The first recipe is a fine dining recipe with a beautiful slow smoked salmon over direct heat. With some tasty tomatoes seared off on a soap stove, seasoned with some ground pepper. And then finally the whole thing gets topped off with a beautiful pecorino cheese. Next up, a golden classic, the ribeye steak. This steak got the heavy sear from that soapstone, building up a beautiful crust while it's soaking in goose fat. Once it's done, it gets seasoned with a beautiful finishing salt, and then it gets rested five minutes before I start slicing into it. And of course, I gotta have that beautiful compound butter on top. The final dish is gonna be a hardcore chicken recipe. Beautiful free range chicken thigh dusted with a good barbecue rub. Then blackened on a soapstone and finished off on the grill of a direct heat at a really low temperature. Once the chicken thighs hit their perfect core temperature, I'm taking them off the grill to let them rest. Now it's time to take these dishes to the next level with our basting technique. For my salmon dish, I decided to go with bacon. Bacon works surprisingly well with salmon and with roasted tomatoes. Of course, our ribeye steak deserves nothing but the best, so I'm gonna go with the Wagyu fat. Melting down that compound butter, creating a beautiful, smooth and creamy texture on our steak. 
And what better combination for our blackened chicken thighs than compound butter, adding more layers of flavor. Dude, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> This Three is, recipes, that's, that's it, always a good start. It's, this is a good start. But which one are you looking forward to testing the first? Well, I have the salmon in front of me. I kind of want to do the, the steak at, at, at first. Yeah? The classic, yeah, the classic. I want to do the salmon first. Okay, then let's do the salmon first. Then. No, no, we gotta, yeah. You're right, you're the culinary expert. And it's, it's like healthy. You go first, yeah, sure. Y yeah, why not? I want a little bit, I want to have, all in one bite. Tomatoes squirting on my salmon. Let's right, go. Cheers. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Salmon in itself is rich and creamy, but it also has that like super protein texture. The bacon is just like, it brings everything, like it pulls everything apart because you got the acidity of the tomato and then the creaminess. It just makes it like a really... Also, um, it, it makes it more barbecue. Yeah. How about that chicken? How about that chicken? Looks burned. No, can't be. <laughs> Let's go. I, I will volunteer to eat your chicken for you. Uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. Best one. We haven't tried the steak yet. No, but this is amazing. You heard it here first. It's amazing. Now what happens is like it's a technique where you blacken it, we put it on the soapstone and you go with the herbs, you go to the point where it's almost burned, but it's just dark. It's like- I love it. Like with those uh, uh, bumbus, for instance. We go to a really dark spot to bring out the best flavors of the spices. But the funny thing is like, what I want to say about the basting is that the herb butter really mm -hmm. performs the mm -hmm. best basting wise. I think so, yeah. Because the butter melts really fast. And because it melts so fast, it doesn't get any time to like go to the point where it's, it goes to its smoke point. Whereas the bacon, it's really sturdy and it, it has a long way to go before it's at, the, at its uh, smoke point. So th then the chances are you get a little bit of the bitterness from the bacon. But with the butter, it's just, it makes so much sense. And it's almost like the French, they had it like worked out. You got steaks. No. What did you just do? Huh? You're gonna clean that up? Boring knife and fork again. But it's gonna be delicious anyway. I don't care what you think. <laughs> I'm eating, look at this. Ribeye steak dripping. Oh, what kind of steak is it? It's just a normal Dutch cow. Yeah, so, but you, you've put, uh, because I wanted to know, you've put Wagyu on it. Wagyu fat. We made it better with Wagyu fat. Let's go. Oh, it's really good. That's really good. This is maybe, we need to do another video on the, about this. This could be a whole thing. This could be a whole thing. And on that note, we need to close off. Yeah. Because this is state secret right now. Mm. Okay. Thank you for watching. Toppers are coming in. Yep. We gotta wrap this up. FBI coming. Thank you guys for watching. Hope uh, to see you guys next time. Until then. It's well, fun. no, until then, you gotta check out the recipe. Oh, for sure. Where did you do that? On the website. Did you do that? Bitmasterx.com. That's right. See you guys next time. Until then, ace market and keep on grilling. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Mm -hmm.